Hello, uh, this is Layer 2 Guide, and when you spawn in, you wanna turn behind you and go into this small opening instead of that one and you climb up these rocks and then jump over here. Air dash is kinda needed for this route. I mean, not really, but having is good, I guess. Get the key, climb up here. Dash down, or if you have dash, the mantra just dash. But uh, sure, you have to do it, I guess. And then walk here, and then open the door. In layer two, there's winds. And there will be these snowballs clumping on you. These are not snowballs, they're parasites. And when five more get on you, they will eat you. You will die, you will wipe. And there are these lanterns across the map where you can clear the parasites with. And I'll show you them later. There's one skip here. Having air dash just makes this route easier, but it's not needed. Oh my god, so janky. That will be a winner, just wait for the win to push you first because this part can catch you off. Slide down and now you will be at this intersection. Go to the right most path. Just push up in, I guess. And don't come down here with insanity because if you have insanity, the parasites get to you much faster and you will die, I guess. Just don't, just be sure that you're not insane and you should be all good. And you go inside this building, jump jump up to dodge your spikes. Don't fall down there, there's a parasite pit. It will boost the amount of time it takes for parasites to get on you. So parasites will get on you much faster. Just don't fall under, push against the wind. And at the end of this bridge, you will encounter your first boss, the Bone Keeper. And, and I guess to beat it, you can just dodge all of his moves. So this one is move is a break of spirits how to dodge just dodge every one of his moves and you should be fine just dodge everything like dodge there and and sometimes after the drill it can jump but just dodge everything get two hits in and it will be posture broken it's time to get free hits i guess you can dodge that sometimes it only drills sometimes it drills plus jump but just jump if it jumps i guess just jump with it and just a bone keeper sometimes a bone keeper can drop the giant femur which can be traded to Dr. Carrion for this mantra, this break of spear mantra. Wait, okay, wrong one, wrong one. Uh, for this mantra. But to do that, you have to go to floor 2 and talk to the Dr. Carrion, I guess. Now you wanna go over here, climb up, and then turn on the generator. Jump down here beside the wire, not there, where you fall down the gap, down here. And walk back the way you came. There will be no more spikes because we just activated it earlier. Just walk back to the intersection again. And now we're back at the intersection. Just go to the middle path instead of the right one. And then climb up here. Climb up. And then this is lantern. Interact with it to clear your parasites. These lanterns will be spread across the map, but just one here, yes. So then you go to the other entrance or the exit of Pugrim's Spite. By the way, the um, Diver Journal is also there. Like, just jump down and you should find it. But just slide down, go past these divers, and turn left. There will be carbuncles here, so if they get on you, just vent them off. And you go through the middle, 
trim down, there will be bounders. Just ignore them. Just run away from them, I guess. And then now we have Fur Caverns. Fur Caverns are a pretty hard place to navigate for people. But I'll put a map on screen so it's easier. So when you come in, you turn right. And then you go into the place with these little tree roots. And wait for the floor to collapse. You climb up here. Take your left. Go straight. And then go through this parasite pit. Do not fall down or the parasites will get on you faster, I guess. And now we're gonna get a spear, which is needed to for to open the gate to Bounder's Nest, which is a scary part with a lot of Bounders. And there are three Kabunkos. Just vent them off and they get on you. Do not climb up the middle. It's a bit yeah, just do not climb up there. It's a bit janky because there's an invis invisible barrier or whatever. Just go the way you came. Through the parasite pit again. And now I want to go left. Go past this gate. And turn left. If you see these tree roots, that means you're going the right way. And then there will be a bounder or a bone keeper here. And there will be spikes. Just sort of dodge it. And now we turn behind. Climb up. And then turn behind again. Go right. Go right. And this floor can collapse. So just try to run past it as fast as you can. Turn left. And then turn left here. Not there. The one with the gate. Turn right. And then turn left again to this crack. And if, if we're going right, we should see another crack. There will be a bounder or bone keeper here. Just go to this crack and climb up. Do not fall under again. It's parasite pit. And then now when you climb up, there will be a bigger opening and a smaller opening. Go into the smaller opening. There will be divers here. You can kill them for a chest. But I don't, want, I don't really want to, so... And press this button to open the door. And there's a lantern back here, so clear the passage if you want. And then climb up. And then now you're at the Fire Village. So, since you got the spear, you will talk to the chief, right? And then the chief will give you a talent called Ethron Gaze. It basically makes you be able to see better in the fog. And every time you talk to the chief, the chief will open the gate to Bounder's Nest. So even though you got the spirit, you still need to talk to the chief. Anyway, so. And, and the spear saves on your slot. So that means if you got it once, you don't need to go, go for it again. Turn left, turn right. And then now go back to the hole you came from, the hole you climb up from. But instead, this time go to the bigger opening instead of a smaller one. And then now, since you talked to the chief and got the spear, this gate should be open. Which leads to Bounders Nest, which is a scary part for many people because there's a lot of Bounders that they have run from. But it's not that bad, so just jump down, climb up, stick to the left, you know these Bounders, just dodge them if you have to. And then climb up this little rock thing, this little slope rock, just climb up here here and then usually people go to go this way but it's hard because look at how small those are and they can fall down so my path is better because you know this piece of wood is big but be careful because they can't fall so just be as fast as you can there will be spikes here but just ignore it slide dash climb if you have to there will be a bone keeper just parry the stack yes okay miss whatever Then keep going. And Chaser's up there. Now we're under Chaser. We're in the library now. There will be a bone keeper on the left, a bone keeper on the right, but just keep running. And if you have the ignition hook talent, you can go up this hook. But since some of you guys might not, I'll just show you to climb up. Climb on these doors, climb up here. Walk on this purple snow thing. Climb up, and then now we just stick to the right wall. And then climb up this ladder and we should be a chaser. Now we're a chaser. And in chaser, you don't have to worry about the parasites. Because the parasites can't get in here, I guess. So, 
I will explain the moves first. This move is Chaser Slack Tightfall. You can dodge it by climbing on one to the bookshelves or the holes in the wall. There's also another way to dodge it by just holding block, but this is a bit more risky because the spikes can hit through the block sometimes. And this is Chaser's blood jumping thing. The way to dodge it is just to jump over it and that's it. And this is Chaser's blood explosion thing. You can counter it by dodging and parrying it. This is Chaser's triple blood thing. You can counter this by holding block and parrying the first two and blocking the last one. And this is Chaser's blood suck thing. You can counter this by dodging or only if you have brick wall you can block and then dodge before you get slammed down like this. And this is Chaser's last phase. He does 25 of these blur spurges thing. You can dodge them if you want to, but Chaser can also do his moves while you're in this phase. If you don't want to be hit by the blur spurging, you have to go in a circle, but that means you have to parry the body slams. So just tank the damage. I think it's the best way to go. And then, yeah. Okay, so you start the Chaser by. You start the boss fight by talking to Chaser and then you get one free hit in first before he kicks you and then there's these blood jars around the room you have to break like you can tell if it's glowing or if it's lines coming from Chaser but um Chaser's like the ender dragon you know like these blood jars heal him and you have to break them for Chaser to not get healed so every time you break them Chaser will get stunned I guess he'll fall down and you're gonna get hit too. Chaser's health actually got nerfed for solo players, which I think is around 15,000 instead of 20,000. So, break these jars. And sometimes the jar can spawn second floor, so just go up there you have to, see these jars, they can spawn up there I guess. And it's really hard to get, sometimes it's really annoying. The old chaser, you could have just broke the blood jars and chaser would have just died. But since it got buffed, you actually have to do damage to chaser now. You actually have to do damage to chaser now, so kind of bad. And some, and some of you might have seen clips of chasers spawning bounders, but I've killed like hundreds of chasers and that has never happened to me. So I think it's removed or it's just fake, so. So chaser will go down again. So the main thing for chaser is to not be nervous, I guess. Don't be scared because the more nervous you are, the more mistakes you make. Even, okay, I need a second phase. Be careful of these spikes, these spikes do a lot of damage, they do, they do more damage than normal spikes. And they fought them really fast, so be careful. Even though you can tank a lot of hits on Chaser, the damage will like stack up over time, you know. And you can't really heal unless you're bloodless and stuff, and there's no health packs. So just try to make the least mistakes as possible. One mistake can lead to more mistakes, so just play passive. If you're new, just try to get a move of chaser before getting another blood jar. And yeah, the jaws up there. And let's learn how to climb these. Some over there. I'm up. And spine cutter can proc on chaser by just hitting chaser in the head, you know. Like stab inside the head. 
stand beside his head and just proc spike her. And after all of Chase's blood jaws are gone, he will kneel down instead of just falling down. And a new move will be added to his moveset, which is Rage Mode, I guess. And um, his Rage Mode is basically him just spamming moves. Like spamming them really fast. So you have to be, ca be careful. And you can tell that it's Chaser's Rage Mode by him laughing while in the air. Or him turning red. Because usually Chaser only laughs when he gets back up or falls back down. So it's pretty easy to tell. And by the way, I forgot to say this, but um, when Chaser reaches, reaches the second phase, you know, when all the spikes fall down, that means that he can't use the spike moves anymore. So you're basically safe from that. So yeah, this, this is just the second phase, I guess. You see, that's his rage mode, he'll turn red, and his moves will become faster, and he'll kneel down instead of just falling down. And it's just his last phase, he'll do 25 of these blood spurges and you can dodge him in one, but he does no damage. Dodge him like that. But I'd say, but keep in mind that Chaser can still chase his moves, can still do moves while in this phase. So focus on dodging the moves instead of this blood thing, because, you know. You can't really tank the moves while this thing is going on. So. Yeah, it's kinda bad. So, the main thing for Chaser is to not be nervous. Try to make as least mistakes as possible. And then, when you kill Chaser, you will spawn in front of Clarice. And good luck in layer 2, I guess. That's my layer 2 tutorial.